Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Luke's United Methodist Church. This is our Sunday worship, May 3, 2020. A few announcements. Uh, I would like to thank our organist, Jeff. Um, also, our soloist this morning, um, Julie Haas. And our reader, Chuck Varney. Okay, thank you so much for helping me in this Sunday worship. Also, if you're um, wondering um, how you can uh, send your pledges or offering, there are two ways to do it. Send it via mail. Our address, 63 East Broadway, uh, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. And you can go online via PayPal or your credit card. Go to our website, okay? And you can uh, do an online giving, okay? As early as now, I would like to announce that um, May 16, we will be serving at the community cafe, but it's uh, food to go. We will be giving out uh, bags, okay? So uh, keep us in your prayers. May 16, 5 p.m. at the church, okay? Join me in our call to worship. Can you hear the voice of God? Response, we hear God calling us by name. Are you troubled or distressed? Response, we come here to find a place to rest. Come and find a guy who knows these lands. Response, we come here to find a place to rest. People come to praise our shepherding God response whose pathways and doors lead to abundant life amen join me in our opening prayer loving shepherd you know our names you care for us when you face darkness you walk beside us when we are searching for your love, you fill us with your presence. When we are hungry and thirsty, you feed us at your table. May we dwell in the house of goodness and mercy all the days of our lives. Amen. Today's scripture lesson is the 23rd Psalm, the Divine Shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Today's Gospel reading comes from John 10, 1 through 10. Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand 
what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. sermon this morning is, I'm calling you by name. Come, follow me. I want us to go back and remember the time we woke up this morning. What was the first thing in your mind? Was it a Thanksgiving thought? Like, oh, it's Sunday. Yay! We're going to have a virtual worship. Or is it a prayer request? Like, God, I need you in my life. Or, God, I am desperately in need of these things, of this and that. Or maybe, oh, it's Sunday, whatever. I'm hoping you didn't say that this morning, okay? But anyway, I'm sure out of those three answers I mentioned, somehow you are able to relate to one of them, okay? I would like us to go back to our prayer requests, especially prayers that pertains to God providing for us. We all pray, God, please provide for us. We need food on our table. We need a decent job so we can provide for our family. God, please protect us as we are still facing a pandemic. God, help us. God, lead us and show us what to do. Show us what we have to do. I believe that the readings this morning 
can answer some of our prayers. Our gospel reading for today leaps from resurrection appearance to John 10, I am the good shepherd. In Judeo-Christian tradition, the term shepherd is used for God, like in Psalm 23. And in Christianity, it is especially used for Jesus, who called himself the good shepherd. The Israelites were pastoral people, and during Jesus' time, there were a lot of shepherds. There are a number of biblical um, heroes that were shepherds among them. Abraham, Jacob, the prophet Moses in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, the angels announced the birth of Jesus Christ to the shepherds. Remember that. This denotes the importance of such work. A shepherd's primary responsibility is the safety and welfare of the flock. Some flock may include as many as 1,000 sheep or maybe even more. In verse 3, it says, The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Imagine now, imagine this morning, we are hearing Jesus' voice, not only calling each of us by name, but saying, look at this beautiful person I have created. Look at this work of creation, this ongoing work of creation. I know this one. This is my beloved. If we hear God saying this to us this morning, how many of us will answer, oh Lord, what about all the other things you know about me? What about all those things that I did? What about all those things that I said? What about the nasty and ugly stuff I am hiding? What about the distortions and the worn parts and failed parts of my body? The Lord answers, Oh, you mean those stuff that you're trying to hide? I see those. Remember, I have healed you. They are visible to me, and you must never forget that you are still my beloved. Remember, I know you. I know you even when you were still in the womb. And I guided you as a child. I have lived with you in the drama and exciting time during your teenager life, of your marriage life. And even now, I have provided you with work, with food on your table. I know the outcome of you. Don't you get it still? I know you and I came to give you an abundant life. In verse 27, we read, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. We would almost expect Jesus to say, My sheep hear my voice. They know me. But he didn't, right? He did not say that. He said, I know them. I know them. Jesus is claiming to know us. We are Jesus' sheep. We are not only supposed to do all the knowing, but most importantly, we are supposed to do the following. Jesus is opening the gates for us. We are the sheep of Jesus, the good shepherd. Jesus is opening the gates for us. Jesus knows us and claims us in verse 3. He knows each of us by name. Knowing us and claiming us goes to another direction. God knows and claims us. God claims God's creation. Because God is omniscient, okay, which means God is all-knowing. God is all-wise. God is all-seeing. Okay? If God is omniscient, then what are we supposed to do? We do the believing, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We do the believing. We do the following. We do the praising. And most importantly, we do the serving part. We serve. We have to recognize also that we do have enough. Okay, we have enough. And then we have to recognize what we really need. What do we need, my brothers and sisters? What do we need? Jesus says it in verse 10. I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Okay, what do we need? We need abundant life. Abundance in life is not having more than what we should have. But abundance in life means 
turning to God, living with God, trusting God. We are also to embrace Jesus' work as the Good Shepherd. We must do our part as the claimed sheep of Jesus Christ. We must stop striving for anything that does not serve God's work. Let me repeat that. We must stop striving for anything that does not serve God's work. It is time, my brothers and sisters, to extend your hand and accept the shepherd's care, the shepherd's presence in your lives. The good shepherd will find us and protect us when we are lost. The good shepherd will guide us when we don't know the way. You and I belong to the same flock. Okay, you and I belong to the same flock. And what does the Lord require from us? We have to wake up every day, not only during Sundays, recognizing that we are to worship joyfully in the expectations of Christ's second coming. We're expected to wake up every day, every morning, and remember that endurance, remember this, endurance is the contender of suffering. Okay, Once we have surpassed the feeling of wanting more, the feeling of suffering, the burden will be light. The burden will be light. Psalm 23 verse 3 says, God will restore us and God will restore our souls. God will lead us in the right path. God will lead us in the right path, my brothers and sisters. The burdens that we are carrying will not be so heavy once we open up ourselves to Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, especially at this time, especially at this time. Our identity and association with Jesus the Good Shepherd can make a sheep feel safe. Safe. S-A-F-E. Okay. John 10 verse 9. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pastures. During that time, sheep pens were constructed with a single and narrow opening. The gatekeeper then can control which sheep can go in and go out and so they will find pasture okay when someone is experiencing so much stress in life whether minor or major one most people quote psalm 23 why it is also considered one of the literature's greatest medicine it can bring calmness and it comforts the one who is hurting it can comfort the one who is worrying jesus also claims I am the door. So far, this metaphor goes, Jesus means he is the gatekeeper, the person who controls the access to the pen. It is only through this door that the sheep can be saved. This uses a Greek term, sotesetai, which means being kept safe or being healed or being rescued from destruction. Jesus is the door and the only door. An idea often repeated in the New Testament, John 14, verse 6, Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God except through me. This also supports the New Testament's consistent teaching that Jesus Christ is the one and only way by which any person can be eternally saved. I will repeat that. It is only through Jesus Christ by which any person can be eternally saved. Now, I would like to ask you, if you are among the sheep, okay, are you going to enter the door when Jesus calls you by your name? Are you going to enter the door when Jesus calls you by your name? Some people claim they're Christians. Some people claim they believe in Christ. Some really proclaim and profess, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. But when Jesus is calling, when Jesus is calling, what is our response? Do we run away from Jesus Christ? Do you flee immediately? Are you constantly trying to escape? Especially if the calling of Jesus, call if the calling of Jesus Christ will entail some hardships on your part. Do you take off immediately? Because you realize that the calling of Jesus Christ will require you some sacrifices. This morning, 
my brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is again calling you by your name. Are you going to respond? In the name of the Good Shepherd, I hope and pray that you are going to respond. You are going to respond to Jesus' calling. Because Jesus is the only way for us to be saved. Because with Jesus Christ, we are all safe. Again, S-A-F-E also. Do not be afraid to enter the gates of the shepherd. Okay? This morning, I want to share with you four reasons why Jesus is called the good shepherd. Okay? During these unprecedented times, we are thinking ways to be safe. Am I right? Okay? We are thinking of ways to be safe. And today, not only that Jesus is calling us to continue our discipleship, but also I believe that Jesus wants us to feel confident that when we hear Him calling us, He wants us to feel safe. Not just we are going to be saved, but He wants us to feel safe. Again, S-A-F-E. Okay, so acronym, S-A-F-E. S, Jesus is our saving shepherd. Our saving shepherd, who after His resurrection, continues to work in the saving act of humanity. When you and I get lost, who saves us? Jesus Christ. Once you realize that even one sheep is missing, what does he do? He rushes and seeks his way so that one, so that that one lost sheep will be able to come back to the flock. And it could be neither one of us, my brothers and sisters, but we must be rest assured that Jesus Christ will never abandon us. The shepherd who left 99 sheep in the fold Search for one sheep which had wandered away. And when Jesus found the lost sheep, he held the sheep by his hands. Is an ideal example of a saving shepherd. Safe? We now go to letter A. Jesus is our attentive shepherd. Attentive shepherd. Jesus knows us by name. And Jesus knows our every hurt. Jesus knows the pain we are experiencing. We should not feel that Jesus is not listening to our cries or to our prayers. Why? Because He is our attentive shepherd. He is attentive to our physical need. But most importantly, during this difficult time, He is also feeling our spiritual need. He is healing us, my brothers and sisters. Safe, S-A-F. We go to letter F. Jesus is our faithful shepherd. Faithful shepherd. Jesus is not wishy-washy, okay? Like many of us. He is not indecisive. He's, he was obedient to the point of his death. And he's still carrying out his mission to bring us closer to God after his resurrection. His faith to God and his faith to God's plan is steady. He is steady. He is faithful in showing us his unconditional and unwavering love. Remember, He sacrificed His life for all of our sins. Last letter, letter E. Jesus is the everlasting shepherd. Jesus came for us so we might live abundantly and will come back for all of us to fulfill His promise so we may have eternal life. Jesus is our everlasting shepherd. His love and care for all of us is everlasting. It doesn't require any standard. Okay? It doesn't matter what's your economic status, what's our marital status, what's our gender, okay? Physical abilities, sexual orientation. His love and care for all of us is everlasting. If you're looking for a safe place to go, especially right now, my brothers and sisters, especially right now, Jesus is opening the gate for all of us this morning. Jesus is opening the gate for all of us this morning. It is safe to enter into the gates of the shepherd. It is safe. It is safe for all of us to follow the good shepherd. Please, I don't want you to overthink. Don't overthink too much. During this time, let us keep our faith and trust to Jesus Christ, our good shepherd. And remember that He is the only and ultimate saving shepherd, attentive shepherd, faithful shepherd, 
and most importantly also everlasting shepherd that will that we all can run to and should follow he is calling us by name i am calling you by your name i am the good shepherd let us answer him as he calls us by our name this morning let us pray pray with me church pray with me lord we will follow you wherever you might lead us lord we would follow you forgive us when we stumble and we stray forgive us when we are distracted and we lose our way be the one to whom we turn whose hand we hold the shepherd who lead us safely to the pool the shepherd who lead us safely to the fold. Lord, we would follow you wherever you might lead us. Lord, we would follow you. Amen. Let us share the love and peace of Christ with one another. Peace be with you. Everyone, peace be with you. Peace be with you. I miss everyone. Stay healthy. Hello, everybody. Peace be with you all. Hi. Hi. Peace to everyone. Peace to everyone. Peace to everyone. Happy, everyone. Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Happy Easter, everybody. Love you. Miss you. Peace be with you. Join me in our love feast for this morning. May the God of gates be with you. And also with you. God calls us to open our hearts to others. For they are filled to overflowing with grace. Every day, let us rejoice in the restorer of our lives. We sing glad songs to the one who leads us. You lead us to this table where we want for nothing, 
for your spirit transforms our everyday food into a sacred feast. Your bread and cup comfort us, nourishing us, so we might be together in everything with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us take the bread that strengthens us, the bread that feeds those who are hungry. You may partake the bread. Let us drink the water or juice that quench our thirst and those who need it. Gracious and loving God, as we join in this love feast, continue to be with us in this difficult time. Remind us, O God, that you are with us and you will never forsake us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
join me in our closing prayer. Merciful God, who is more than we can ever imagine, give us a wider vision of the world. Give us a broader view of justice. Give us dreams of peace that are not defined by boundaries of geography or race or religion or by the limitations of worldly structures and systems. Open our eyes, O God, and our ears that wherever we go, we may hear your voice calling us by our name, calling us to serve, calling us to share, calling us to praise so that we never give up on the promise of your kingdom where the world is transformed and all can enjoy life in all its fullness. In the name of the Good Shepherd, we pray. Amen. Benediction. Let us go now with our trust in the Good Shepherd. And let us love, not just in words, but in truth and action. Believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Love one another just as he has commanded you. May Christ Jesus be the cornerstone of your life. And may the Holy Spirit abide in you and tend you with love and mercy all the days of your life. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. Amen. God's peace be with you all. I will see you next week, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Have a blessed week. Bye.